thank you very much for the very ins uh, inspiring words and your great and interesting presentation. So now it's your turn. You have the chance for questions and for discussion. And um, yeah, very happy to see you participating now. And please take the chance. Who wants to be first? We have a leader here. Yeah, a leader, first one. <laughs> Just a second, please wait for the microphone, so thank you. First of all, thank you very much. It was highly interesting. Um, I wanted to ask you about one thing uh, that came into my mind, and it, um, it was um, on one of your slides, uh, there was tools for a leader, and you ca I think you called it, uh, one, of the, one of the buzzwords was um, sanctions. Yeah. How does, what do you mean by sanctions? People may free ride because they anticipate that nothing will happen to them, because they will never confront anyone else. All the decisions are made in the lab in an anonymous context. In the real life, I mean, in company, usually you, you have a chance to meet your partners. Uh, and if your partners are not very happy with you, they will express their disapproval. And uh, this disapproval can be just in words but it can be uh, costly to you. If someone stops helping you, or even perhaps sabotage you, you will be less able to take advantage also of the team effort. So there are different ways to think about sanctions and about uh, the, the, these type of things. I would just show you, uh, we didn't coordinate before, huh, but I had one slide uh, <laughs> in my stock about punishment. What happens in, in, in this type of setting when you let people punish others. It's at their own cost, so it's altruistic punishment. Huh? If you decide to punish a free rider in your team, it means that you will reduce your own payoff. Huh? So uh, if you are rational, selfish, you should never do it. Huh? So it's not credible. Still, what we observe is the following. So this comes from a very famous experiment by Ernst Fehr and Simon Gechter. Uh, when people re, uh, are, are uh, matched together for 10 periods, they stay together, so standard decay of cooperation. As soon as you introduce the right to punish, it's on the right panel on the graph, you see that cooperation increases immediately. So when you can reduce the payoff of someone else, by, uh, which expresses clearly your, uh, your disapproval, so this type of sanction has an immediate effect. So it means that even free riders start imitating the cooperators. They cooperate, and you see that it's even in the last period. It, it keeps going. What we did in a follow-up study, we, we, we did uh, the same type of uh, design, except that there was no monetary cost. It was just expressing your disapproval. So you could send disapproval points to your team members after observing the level of contribution. And this is without so standard decay. This is when we introduce a moral disapproval. We have the same effect as with monetary sanctions. So just having the possibility to say to someone else, come on, guy, you, you should stop doing what you are doing. You should contribute a little bit more. And we will all benefit from it is not enough, but it already improves the, the, the willingness of people to, to, to contribute to the team effort. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yep, here. First of all, thank you very much for the interesting presentation and everything you are doing with this tema. I would like, I would like to ask your opinion um, with all the experience that you have where do you see more space to improvement? Is it top management or middle management? Mm -hmm. That's a very nice question. Uh, that I would love to, to, to study in the field with real top managers and real uh, medium level managers. That would be extremely interesting. Um, I th <laughs> it's easy, huh? both, <laughs> at both levels, because we, we need to anticipate the, the peer effect and the dissemination effect. So if you can start introducing good practice at some point in the company, what matters is that uh, it disseminates, because there are peer effects, and because you give a good example. So 
at, at every level, it matters to, to, to give good example and to, to start changing things and promote cooperation. It's obvious that at the top, you are more visible because you, you can affect more people. And so probably having at least a, a very honest manager at the top showing a good example is probably crucial. But um, at everyday level, so in, in the workshop, I, I think it's also very important to let people uh, introduce uh, small mechanisms that can help in everyday life. But again, I think that it's really a, cons a company has to be consistent, right? So the same logic should apply at all levels. Now, whether we should start at the highest level or intermediate levels, sincerely, I, I don't think any experiment pr that does it, that studies that precisely, it would be fantastic to do it uh, with uh, real people from real companies. Yeah. Thank you. More questions? I think you made your point that teamwork is good and uh, reduces cognitive load and therefore in increases uh, decision making, yet we see a lot of projects fail. And how does, or what's your opinion, how does that fit in, into that framework? So this is uh, absolutely true that uh, being on a team sometimes increases the size of effort. And we have famous cases in the industry, especially in the aerospatial industry, in which people receive signals uh, indicating that they should stop this project and they didn't listen to the signals. And being on a team sometimes creates some emulation. And people receive negative signals, they don't see these negative signals. So we have what we call this um, uh, group, uh, group um, 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 wishful thinking. So all types of processes that can develop in groups in which you also make more mistakes in, in groups because you don't want, you are, you are over optimistic and you don't want to listen to basic signals that should tell you, stop, you are, in the, you are going the wrong direction. But since you have created a lot of emulation, everyone is able to persuade the others that we should continue in this direction. So it's also true, my message was probably too simple but there are famous cases in which all the information was on the table and the, the red light was uh, uh, in several places and the teams didn't want to see the red lights because they were enthusiastic and over-optimistic. So teams may also create some over-optimism in, in, in the management of some projects. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There was another question. Matthias? Thank you. Uh, just I had a question. What if the reward of the team member is uh, based basically in a competitive uh, environment? So where uh, basically not everyone can get the same thing and uh, like the best performer will get more than the lower performer, but it will be always the same distribution. So uh, there are experiments looking at whether people cooperate more when you have intergroup competition. And this is interesting because indeed it tends to uh, increase the cohesion of people within the team when you can oppose another team. So your attention is directed toward the competition with other teams. Well, um, there it's as well. Uh, so how to prevent as well, especially uh, that the team are starting to sabotage each other. So sabotage is, a, is an important question. We, we find that, um, so sabotage is usually associated with competitive payment schemes. When you cr introduce more competition, you tend to introduce some forms of sabotage. So sabotage may be simply, uh, I don't transfer the information, I keep this for myself, etc. cetera. Uh, but it may not be only competitive payment schemes. It's not only competitive rewards. It's also competition for status. So we, ca we can produce in the lab a situation in which people are paid only based on their own performance. And we let people uh, pay a cost to sabotage others. They can reward others, they can do many things. Huh? We let them make their decisions. And we find that we have 15% of people who 
accept to accept, choose, decide to, to earn less to reduce the performance of other people. It's totally, uh, what, it's what we call anti-social preferences. But it's, it's motivated in that case by pure concern for status. I want to be the first, so I will not transfer the information because I want to, to keep the first. So even, you see, it's, it's, it's competition, even when the company compensation schemes doesn't try to promote competition, but still people are willing to be better than the others, right? So they care about rank and this concern for status may lead also to this type of, uh, of, of setting. So it's also I important to, well, status, status is very important, image is important. So it's very important to also to manage uh, the, the image of teams so that nobody in the team is considered as less good than the others. I mean, it's, it's very complicated, right? Okay, merci. Thank you. So the final question here for tonight, or two, then ma we make two, one and two. Thank you. Um, you mentioned this study about the selection into the team scheme or individual scheme with the peace rates. I wonder whether this study has also been conducted in different parts of the world, mm. whether there are cultural differences about how the gender differences are in terms of selection into the payment scheme. So for the gender uh, differences, I don't know because we have conducted this experiment only in France. So I don't know whether we can replicate. It would be interesting to replicate that in different countries. Uh, we know, for example, that uh, the um, gender gap in competitiveness, so the choice of a competitive payment scheme, um, you, you do not find the same result in China compared to uh, the other uh, developed countries. Uh, women in China are as competitive as men. So it's possible that um, as regards teamwork, uh, we would find differences uh, across, across countries. That's very possible. But this um, development of rewriting over time, this experiment has been conducted in all types of, uh, of uh, place in the world. You find the same tendency. Now the, 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 the speed of the decline in cooperation may differ. So there are differences between collectivist cultures versus individualistic cultures. So you, you can find differences. Huh? But overall, you, always, you are always able to see these differences. We have cross-cultural differences in the efficiency of instruments. So you asked a question about sanctions. The experiments of sanctions have been also replicated in many places in the world. And sanctions don't work at all in some countries especially in countries like Russia, uh, Ukraine, or um, this part of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the world. Because people use the instrument completely differently. They use the instrument to punish cooperators. So in this environment, uh, when people have the right to punish team members, they use this punishment opportunity. They pay for that, for using that, to punish those who contribute the most in the group. This is interesting because these people who contribute the most make your earnings. So you sabotage the people who increase your own payoff. But this is what, what, uh, what has been observed several times. So the, the mechanisms that you can implement to favor cooperation, we, may, we, we need to adjust that in some, in some places in the world because it's not at all used the same way. So, indeed, the cross-cultural differences are very interesting to study. Thanks. And the last question. Um, I was wondering about, um, what about personal values and meaningfulness, like in terms of teams and team purpose? Um, have you any you know, evidence or any studies done about that? And how is the impact here? So if you can, if you can uh, for example, group identity uh, as very, very, uh, is an important motivation. Huh? And so we, we find in the lab that uh, if you make group identity salient and you can generate completely artificial group identity, huh? I call you blue, I call other people green, you just have this label huh? and you play the same game you will produce most of the time some form of in-group favoritism. 
So people will be more willing to follow a leader who has the same color or to uh, contribute when the, the, the other group members have the same color compared to a situation in which you mix in the group people with different colors. So uh, group identity, which relates to uh, your values, your morals, etc., can influence the individual behavior of people in this type of environment. That's very true. Uh, we did some experiment on gender, uh, sorry, on uh, age, and we wanted to see whether it's better to form groups with older or senior and juniors together, or is it better to, to separate? Uh, what we found, we, we were agnostic initially, because we did not know the impact of age. It could be like in these games, when you get older, you learn that there are free riders in the world, huh? so you become less and less cooperative. <laughs> or it may be the opposite. You learn that there are instruments. You learn that you can express your disapproval, etc. So you, you, you are confident. So in fact, we found that older uh, senior employees, we did that in companies, senior employees were more cooperative. But they were even more cooperative when they knew they were matched in teams with junior people. And clearly, when we debriefed people, it was the idea of we need to give we, there were no, no leaders in that case, but we need to give good example to other people. We need to motivate the others to, to do more. To some extent, it's also personal values. We don't know whether it's age or generation, or there are many things that can play. Yeah? Uh, but uh, personal values uh, have a very important role because they're also related to social preferences, to how you have been taught by your parents, your previous experience, your previous colleagues, uh, which norm you should develop. So it's clearly very, very important how you learn the norms in, in a group. And clearly, all groups don't have the same norms. So thank you very much again thank for you. the keynote and the discussion.